we need men to step into the fray. You know, men, sure. so, yeah, we need men. I'll say, well, the women have kind of taken over the church. Well, no, it's your fault. You know, you didn't join the parish council. Why don't you join uh, and teach catechism, teach RCIA, teach confirmation, lead a youth group, start a men's group. Men need to, we, need, we really, really need our men to come up to the front line and not be sitting in the background anymore. Yeah, that temptation to passivity, right, is so real. Yeah, it takes a lot of confidence to kind of st- have to step out and, you know, to do our to do our ministry. We had this is this is my full time work now, and it's had to be a work of trust in the Lord. And there's all those voices that want you to say, like, kind of just stay back and don't push too hard and don't uh, try to do something big for God. But um, it's been a, a good learning process. Just seeing, I mean, God takes care of it. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine. Roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. I've heard a rumor that you uh, you have this problem with jumping off of rocks or cliffs or, or <laughs> stuff like is that. Do you do that on purpose? You know, yeah, we used to a little bit more. I uh, I have two young kids now, so I try to. But for for a while there, especially in college, me and my group of friends, that's kind of one of our our favorite pastimes was to go find high rocks to jump off of. Into, well, are they still uh, all alive? I mean, did you lose any of them in the process? You know, almost. But we did make it. There's some great near miss stories. You know, uh, but but yeah, we're all we're all still alive and kicking, which is good. So you're saying going to college in Steubenville it, it drives you to the edge so much that you just want to jump off a cliff. That's it. There's not a lot to do in the Ohio Valley. Yeah. The Roman generals, when they would come into uh, Rome, you probably know this, when they came, came into Rome, after a, they would have what they called a triumph. They would get to walk through Rome and everyone would cheer for them. They were supposed to leave their armies on the other side of the Rubicon, right? Except one of them didn't, but, but the Rubicon River. But they would come in and they were sure. shouting and screaming, you're so awesome. You won this great victory. You're, you're the man. But there was a slave that would walk about eight steps behind him, and the slave would be saying, memento mori, remember your death. You know, victory is fleeting. That's I cool. When I won the world title, my first world title, it was like really a great feeling, and it lasted about an hour. And then it was sure. like, you know, the, 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 the stands were taken down. Everybody left the beach. And it was like, is that all there is you know, to that? I pursued yeah. that so hard for so many for decades, you know. Um, so, so uh, the the monks of the desert did this too in North Africa, right? Memento mori. Yeah. And I always have worn a skull ring. I don't have it on right now, but because that's they would all have a skull. In they may not they may only have some psalms and a gospel in their in their caves, but they all had almost all of them had a human skull to help them remember, live like you're gonna die. Yeah, you can't take it with you. Yeah, like I I think even was it the actor Jim Carrey who you know can be controversial, but um, he said, he, I, I, I wish everybody would achieve like the kind of fame and, and fortune and success that they're seeking after so that they realize it's not the answer. Like so many people spend their whole lives just trying, trying to get to the point that you're describing, where it's like, this is the pinnacle. Everything I've been seeking after, this is it. And I'm still empty. Like there has to be more than this. You know, exactly. if I find within myself a desire that this world can't satisfy, I, it means I wasn't made for this world. It took me about a year to realize like the, the, the deep emptiness that was that was in my heart because of the kind of life I was living and how it was just leading me to someone I didn't want to be. And um, just in a moment of clarity again, woke up uh, June 7th or June 2nd, 2007. I like still remember the day and my parish had confessions every day. And I remember knowing that and I woke up and I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, that's it. Like, I can't live this way anymore. This is just this is, I'm wasting my time. This is just stupid. And uh, went to confession, gave my life to God. Well, wait, what happened like at confession? History. What happened at confession? Well, so we had these great parish well, priests. Can we, hear your, my... can we hear your sins or no? <laughs> yeah. So I said, well, so I think too, like, right, like, I think I'm going to blow these guys away. Like, they've never heard sins as bad as mine. You know, like, I'm just this, like, rebel without a cause. And they, you know, and I get there and say all my sins and they've heard it all before. Right. So I'm thinking that they're going to be scandalized. They're going to recognize my voice, you know, whatever. Cause we, we knew the priest and all this stuff. And all they said is I absolve you of your sins. And the father, you know what I mean? Like they, they've heard it all. And, and, and like the, the, the whole point of confession is that we like without sin, there wouldn't be confession. Like we think in some way, I don't know. We have these weird distorted Why notions. Why would God provide for confession if you didn't need it? <laughs> this is what I mean. Like it's just, we're so, 
But what does it feel like when you, when you, when you, here's someone listening that said, I haven't been to confession in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. I always say going to confession is like skydiving. You really get nervous. And the more, when they start strapping that suit on you, like, like the parachute on you before you, like getting in line, you know, for confession. And then all of a sudden the door opens, like the plane of the door plane opens and then the confession opens and you're going, now you're going in and it's like, there's no return. It's, there's, there's a great apprehension. Did you have an apprehension leading up to it? Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, I'm like mortified thinking of the things I'm about to tell this, you know, this guy. And then there's that realization of like, this isn't about telling him. It's about me getting right with God. And, and Jesus set up this whole structure in John chapter 20, you know, whoever sins you forgive are forgiven. He says that to his apostles. Right. And um, yeah, I think I think that's it. It's almost like it's like jumping off of the, the cliff, cliff into the water. Yeah. At some point, you just have to like, like swallow hard and go and, and it's always that feeling of coming up out of the water after and you're like let's go hey man i don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter you get free video content including the bear wozniak radio show video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.